40 years ago, back in the middle of the 1970s, radio-controlled aircraft had suddenly become almost affordable and almost reliable. At last, we could achieve the dream of flying our own real aircraft. The Lee Bees Model Aeroplane Club was formed at HMS Daedalus in Gosport around about 1946. Building model aircraft was seen as educational and we were encouraged to read the Aero Modeler. Although in fact we were more likely to be scanning the pages of the Keelcraft catalogue to see those exciting control line aircraft which could actually be controlled through wires as they flew around us in a circle. Surprisingly, in the 1970s, there were still enthusiasts for this kind of cheap, exciting aircraft, and the Lee Bees were enthusiastic model aircraft racers. Here, Rip Gentle shows off our racers, while Andy Poulter and Malcolm Lee show off theirs. Dick Crake starts up his mouse racer. These were not just races round in a circle. These included real tactics and real pit stops. But not all of the Lee Bees were so enthusiastic about these rather noisy, smelly aircraft. Here, Tony Liskutin unravels yards of powerful rubber materials that were used to power free flight models. The Lee Bees had a beginner's class, the Keelcraft Senator. And you know, I was taken in as well. I built my Keelcraft Senator. I even wound it up with a wheel brace but somehow it didn't quite fly in the way that the experts' models flew. But experts like Eric Thomas had tweaked their aircraft with modified propellers and changed aerofoil sections. These aircraft were something special. The rubber motors were wound up with 1,200 turns. Timing these models in flight was done very carefully, but the better they flew, the further you had to run to get them back. The Lee Bees had their own magazine, featuring gossip and articles about the models flown by members. Plans would be included of members' models. This one was my all-star biplane powered by a 2.5cc glow motor. Of course we weren't averse to the odd bit of special effects to make it seem as though it was flying rather more realistically than it actually did. But the Lee Bees could count some prominent personalities among its membership. Eric Coates was for many years the scale modelling correspondent of the Aero Modeler. His famous de Havilland 4 free flight model even won a world championship. But in the 1970s he's mostly remembered for his Martin Side Elephant. He was often heard grumbling that he'd had to buy a new car in order to get his elephant in the back. This perfectly produced model aircraft featured regularly in scale competitions. Here, Lee B's member, Martin Rudgley, judges the scale competition at Odiham. But despite the accuracy of the model, Eric's flying somehow didn't come up to the same standard. but I too have managed to get some of my model designs published. This was my Cosmic Wind. And my love of racing aircraft came through in my GB Model D. But perhaps my favourite was the ugly fly spray crop duster.
but it was at members' model evenings that we got to compare our projects. Brian Cracknell showed us his Captain Sensible. While Dennis Underwood showed us another vintage design. Tony Butterworth showed us his nobler control line stunt aircraft. And Bill Besant, his stiletto control line stunter. But there was one class that cut across everyone's enthusiasm. That was indoor flying. These tiny 13 inch wingspan peanut model aircraft were built by almost everybody. This is Brian Moore's Piper Cub and Eric Thomas's Nesmith Racer. Glider flying too was an enthusiasm in the summer. And here we see Terry Mason launching for brother Derek. Pylon racing was always controversial. The larger classes featured very loud, unsilenced engines. But as always, it was the stunters that attracted the attention. This was a chance for radio controlled pilots to show off their expertise. Ken Day was prominent among the radio control flyers. Seen here spinning his aerobatic aircraft in front of the judges and then going for a rather rough spot landing. Martin Rudgley enters the same competition. But one prominent member was Harry Veer. It was said that he could not fly without smoking 20 cigarettes first. In the last 40 years things have moved on. Radio control is cheaper. There are ready-made aircraft to be bought off the shelf, but it's all just the same fun. Mm -hmm.